So now we've got our query, which is already in clausal form. I can't believe it. Um, R of x or not I of x. All right, brilliant. And we were asked to prove something, which means we stuck in the negated query and we're going to do uh, resolution refutation theorem proving, which means we throw in the negated, we assume the KB is consistent, we throw in the negated query and we try and derive an inconsistency. If we're successful, then the original thing, the query is true. Everyone on board with refutation? All right, well, let's do it. Come on. Let's resolve. Get to it. Who's going to, where are we? So we did, we've done, we already did this. We did uh, Jeff, Jonathan. What's our first resolution? We're trying to derive bottom here. Four and five um, gives us a six, which will be R of C. Exactly. Thank you. All right. Next up, Jen. Any thoughts? What can we, what what sort of things might we resolve here? Eventually, we're going to try and reach bottom, which means we're going to resolve two length one things to get a length zero thing. But we can't resolve any of these length one things. So that means we're going to have to get a length two thing come in here. What can we resolve against uh, this clause number six? No, I can't do five because that's the R occurs positively there. In order for to do resolution, we have to have a matter meets antimatter collision. So one and six is a beautiful choice. Uh, I'm going to call that resulting thing seven. What are we going to end up with if we resolve one and six together? We have to unify X and C. So. We're going to end up with L of C. Exactly. L of C. Okay, that's good. Uh, Evan, what's next? Excellent choice. Seven and two, resulting in. Of. Yes. Dun dun, Tyler, bring it home. Dun dun, yeah, fantastic. Proof, QED. Gah. All right, any uh, questions about resolution refutation theorem proving? So you didn't prove that the original query is true. There exists an X such that not R of X and I of X. I bet there are, there are. I, I mean, I would guess there are probably something like, you know, 400 million people on Earth that are highly intelligent and unable to read at this point. Yes. Can of worms, you are opening up here. Dun, ta, da, resolution strategies. So um, relevant. Yeah, what is relevant? Oh, that we knew. Oh, that we knew. Um, so yeah, it's tough to know what's relevant. It just is. I mean, in order to get this proof we just did, right, we had to go, we had to go through, we were trying to get to bottom, but we ended up having to go through, which you might say, oh, I really care about D and I, but to get there, we had to go through R, like there was a connection through reading. So,
so it's not always obvious what's relevant. Um, now, for the assignment, I think I suggest that you first try to resolve short things. So you've got a, a, a kind of clause waiting kind of preference. But even then, it would be nice if we could be even smarter about what we do. And um, so that heuristic of, oh, let's just choose the short ones and try and resolve them, that gets you only so far. There are these other th there's, there are these uh, strategies, resolution theorem proving strategies that people have come up with. And amazingly, they have proved that some of them actually work, uh, which is always nice. Oh, it's not working. I hate your previewer. Um, so the stupid way of doing resolution is breadth first, where you take everything in the KB and resolve it against everything else. Um, you guys are going to have to implement something called set of support uh, resolution. And what that means is uh, you're going to have your KB, but there's going to be a smaller set called the set of support. And every time you do a resolution, at least one of the parents is going to have to come from the set of support. And um, this, is, this, this resolution strategy is only complete if the clauses not in the set of support are satisfiable. Now, when we start off with our theorem proving, what do we know as far as the satisfiability of any of our clauses? The KB, the KB. So, so the negated query is going to start off being the set of support. So this is kind of, it's kind of like a goal-based kind of way of doing resolution because you're going to start by looking at the thing you're supposed to prove. <laughs> uh, and and the, the, if you're going to derive bottom, there's going to have some ancestry that goes back to that original contaminant that comes in, the negated query, that is sullying our pristine and pure and wholesome KB. So set of support, you, you, uh, you take your negated query, that's the set of support, you resolve it against your KB, you generate something, that thing you generate goes in the set of support. And when you have multiple things in the set of support, you have to consider resolving them against each other, but you also have to consider resolving them against things outside the KB. But at least you're not having to consider all n squared things, like things I've ever derived and the whole KB against all the other things I've derived and the KB. Like the KB versus KB resolutions are not going to get you anywhere. Um, so, so this is a resolution strategy that helps. It cuts down on the number of resolutions that you consider doing. There are others. Um, one useful one is input resolution, uh, where at least one of the things you're resolving against is part of the input, as opposed to one of the things you derive. But that is only complete for KBs that are in a very specific form called horn that uh, I haven't talked about yet. Named after like some guy named Alfred Horn or something. Um, so anyway, so I highly recommend set of support. In fact, I require it. Uh, yeah, so that was a great, I've already forgotten who asked the question. Anyway, so did you get a good answer? Okay, happy student, okay.